We now move to point eight on the stages from good to better than that. After we present our work to the world, unless we get recognition and acknowledgement from someone who is at least a competent authority in the field, it's time to take up plumbing, <laughs> or carpentry, or go home to our mother in Wimborne. <laughs> so, the, the three main stages are this. Injunction, do this. Application, we, we practice. We, we put inside us our training so that it's embodied and we can speak on behalf of our field. And then the third final stage is verification, which for the performing musician is generally you play in public. And if the audience get on the feet and cheer, this might be acknowledgement. <coughs> but on May the 14th, 1969 in London, England, if Jimi Hendrix said, this was acknowledgement. At that Speak... It's the Speak Lively and Coarsely Club. The Speak Lively and Coarsely Club. <laughs> you hit the national stage in one night. Yes. And then you hit the international stage in Hyde Park with the Rolling Stones. On July the 5th, 1969, it was a Saturday. <laughs> the Rolling Stones were returning to live performance. And there were a number of different bands supporting them. And for King Crimson, we were, we were the unknown band of the day. And we came on and the general view in front of an audience variously assessed between 650,000 and a million, and I hover around 850,000. King Crimson was considered the band of the day. Now, why this is important, there were many people who had come from Europe and from the United States to see the Rolling Stones return to live performance. And they went back and said, there's a band you must see a new band, it's King Crimson. So from one point of view, this was a move to the international stage. Now, you probably can't see in this stage left, I can just see him. There's a young guitarist from King Crimson who was on the stage for one minute before the Hells Angels threw him off. <laughs> so we moved effectively to the international stage. And this is probably the time to ask, how many levels of geographical success are there? Seven. The first is domestic. That is, if your mother and your favorite aunt, and perhaps even your sister, are not prepared to listen to you playing guitar at home, time to move to carpentry <laughs> or bookkeeping or doing something with useful with your life. So domestic is the first. Now, if your mother and aunt and sister are still listening to you, you might begin to give performances at Wimborne Liberal Club, the Legion Hall, dances at Pampill Secondary Modern School, or even Stape Hill Youth Club. At that point, you've moved to the local. If you're still getting engagements, even in Verwood and Corf Mullen, you might get a call to go to Axminster in Devon, over the border from Dorset. So you have moved to regional. If you're doing well in the regions, you might even get to go to London and perform. And then you break nationally. If you're doing well in England and the word is going out to Europe and the United States, you might move to the international platform. After that is global. The Beatles are global. King Crimson is international. The Beatles is global. And after global, you go interplanetary. 
Now, maybe this is a different one to conceive, but standard record contracts, the last one I looked at, <laughs> includes rights, interplanetary rights, for any form of delivery on any platform to any possible foreseeable worlds and the vehicles you're traveling to get there. So, there is an interplanetary stage. These are the seven levels. And you've already covered the importance of recognition and acknowledgement, which brings us up to an interesting question, because our subject is how you go from a beginner to a master. And these young men who were 23 years old, and even if they were all practicing as much as you, which is difficult to imagine, with a very short period of time, you hit the national stage, the international stage. You surely weren't old enough to be considered a master, yet the world was changing. How can you explain that? A key characteristic of mastery is the assumption of innocence within the context of experience. Uh, on May the 17th, 1964, I saw Segovia give a solo concert at the Winter Gardens in Bournemouth, just down the hill from the Majestic. This was the first time that Segovia ever walked on stage. He played Bach. This was the first time he played Bach. This was the assumption of innocence within the context of experience. Pablo Casals, the cello player, playing the Bach Suites. He's never played them before. This is the first time. This is the assumption of innocence within a context of experience. A good professional knows what they're doing. So they do what they know. Life is too short. I need something more than that. The good professional knows what they can do. They know what they can't do. They know what's possible, and they allow space for the impossible to enter. Now, these young men were not masters. They were beginning professionals. In a sense, they were innocent. The master assumes innocence. These young men were innocent. They didn't know what they couldn't do, so it could be done. But the key to the success of King Crimson and these young men was the power of the music. Music leant over and took those young men into its confidence. But they didn't have a sufficiently developed personal discipline to handle the current. Fuses blew. And the band broke up in December in San Francisco, 1969, having been together for 11 months and one day. It was December the 14th. <laughs> what day of the week was that? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> it was a Sunday. <laughs> now, I know that must have been a heartbreak for you. It broke my heart. Driving from Los Angeles, where we've been playing at the Whiskey A Go Go, Eric Burden booed us. Otherwise, hey, we could handle it. <laughs> Driving from the Whiskey A Go Go up to Carmel, where we spent the night, Ian McDonald in the back of the car said to me that he and Mike were leaving the band and I was heartbroken. The band meant so much to me, I said, if you'll stay, I'll leave. If I was in the way of this, I would rather go and the band continues. But Ian said, no, it's more you than me. So I kept going. 